Greetings, Famalam. Welcome, if you are new. <clears throat> I am Emily, otherwise known as Shamanism. You can call me anything, just don't call me late for dinner. Welcome, if you're new to the channel. We talk about a variety of topics from spirituality to health to all sorts of things. So welcome, and welcome back if you're not new. <clears throat> excuse the frog in my throat, and also excuse the heating pad on my shoulder. Um, huh. So in today's quick video, the topic is accepting is sort of twofold accepting help as well as as well as understanding that you're worthy of rest and i hesitated a long time there because i was thinking what what to do i say about it exactly and i'm not really sure <laughs> except for to say that this is the result of a really stupid injury <laughs> or or should I say it is a really silly injury. It just happened where, and I'm not going to demonstrate because if I do that, it will really hurt. I'll, maybe I'll do it all Roboto style. But basically, I turn to look at something this way <laughs> too fast. And I wrenched the heck out of like my whole, <laughs> basically, this whole muscle on the other side. So forgive me whilst I do this video while holding a heating pad on my shoulder. <laughs> it's quite, uh, it is actually surprisingly painful for a very silly injury. So the twofold topics of today are just sort of reminders, I hope, to you guys, which are number one, sometimes in life, there are just times that we, it's a good idea that we accept that we need help because we've injured ourselves or whatever, and then we allow ourselves to both rest and accept help from others. It's something I bring here to the forefront because I have largely struggled with this in my life up until now, and I do still struggle with this more often than I don't. The idea of asking others for help and or sort of feeling like a burden, I don't know if you can relate, and so I just wanted to come here because quite literally, I, I did this, injured myself, uh, I guess today is the third day, I think. I did this three days ago, and I kid you not when I say that I haven't really been able to move or do anything. Like, this is the hand that is affected, this is my left hand, which thankfully, it is my non-dominant hand. This one that's holding the heating pad is, is my dominant hand. However, that's the other thing I will say, is it's given me a great appreciation for the things that I can, in fact, do. I, whew, speaking of, I shouldn't gesture much with that hand. So forgive me if I'm a little less gestury today, guys. It comes natural, but I'm trying to not move the shoulder very much. So I really wanted to remind you guys that when these things happen... Partially, number one, I have to laugh at it because let's all just remember that we did this for some excitement in our lives here on Earth, right? And that that's a little bit, to me, comedic. That, to me, I think the lesson, right, <laughs> was that I wasn't taking the rest and I was just letting my to-do lists run my life. And it literally took me doing something completely silly and, like, turning to look at something too fast and doing this injury for me to take like a complete rest. Like I, when I tell you I have not so much been able to do anything, I mean literally like picking up anything with my left hand is a struggle. Pretty, pretty lightweight even. Um, I can't really turn my head much past like about nine, 90 degrees. Yeah, <laughs> 90 degrees. So, it, you know, it's almost as if I <clears throat> have like a neck brace on, but without the brace. So I guess what I just wanted to lean into or have been leaning into and realizing with this injury <laughs> is how grateful I am for the things that I can do and the limbs that I do have access to. For example, when I first did this and I really couldn't move at all, I was sat in my, my gaming chair, <laughs> basically really wanting to play a game. But I kid you not, just the motion of doing this like on a controller I surely couldn't reach like this and I can kind of do it now but it's I've been resting it for like three days and I just felt so completely like sad I, I started to think about people who have less mobility than me and that wasn't the point isn't so much the feeling sorry for anyone as just although of course I empathize like crazy with people who have limited or different abilities right um physically 
like, and I have, side note, <laughs> incredible, unbelievable amounts of respect. And what is the word? That's not, there's a bigger word that I want that I can't think of in this moment, but just incredible respect and love for these people. Like in the Paralympics, the insane things that these humans overcome just blows my mind. You know, people with one leg, no legs, no, you know, no limbs, whatever limbs. <laughs> I don't even know. It's unbelievable to me the things that they're able to achieve. And it's really humbling because it's like, whoa, Nelly, like <laughs> I'm here with my my four functional limbs and my brain and, you know, working as per normal. <laughs> and I haven't, you know, and I still can't achieve those things. And anyway, so I have mad respect for, for people with all sorts of different abilities, right? So anyway, I just was... I don't know the right word, but uh, absorbing in and kind of marinating in in gratitude, weirdly enough, or maybe not weirdly enough, it perfectly enough. I found myself just being like, yeah, this is really hard and it is physically really hurts, but I'm so, not but, and I'm so grateful that I can do this or I can do that and that I have people around that can help me sometimes, you know, if something's too heavy for now, if I can't lift it. So I guess my, not advice, you know, just my observation of what is happening in my life and what I would suggest if you want maybe your life to work smoother is to allow, just allow, honestly, allowing is allowing, allowing is a big theme of general right now. And just allowing yourself to be, allowing yourself, allowing the tides of life to come and go, i.e. me having to completely rest Again, it's funny to me because I was very clearly getting the message, you could say, you know, downloaded, to take a freaking break. And what did my little brain keep it doing? Run in the hamster wheel and run in the cycle and the to-do list. And you got to do this, you got to do that. Until finally, whether I did it myself or, you know, you want to say the universe, whatever happened, however, whoever is responsible, right? Me. Uh, for wrenching my shoulder out and my whole neck, then forced me to rest in a complete sense. I've literally just been sitting here with heating pads or laying still. It was about all I could do. So <laughs> comical lesson also, when you get, you know, a hint from the universe, like you should do this thing. You should probably do the thing so that you don't do something worse and end up learning the thing in a harder way. <laughs> so yeah. Very much so, it's a time of letting go of all things. And for me personally, what that means is letting go of everything in a sense. Letting go of preconceived expectations, preconceived notions, preconceived programmings, letting go of control of things, accepting when things like this injury happen and, you know, doing my best, I guess you could say, to be present in each and every moment with gratitude and love as much as possible, right? Like, I feel like we get a choice in every moment. And, you know, just before making this, I was bawling purely because my, I guess you could say my inner child was just really in pain from this shoulder and was really having a hard time with the fact that we right now can't really do anything and like wish we could play games with our eyeballs or something like eyeball tracking games, <laughs> That might even be a thing for all I know. So I hope that all of you are having and have had a beautiful week. I hope that the next time that I see you that I am not <laughs> having any sorts of issues. I also hope that you and your families are doing well. If this video helped you in any way, shape, or form, or if you know a friend who needed to hear this, needs needed to hear this advice, please do share it with them. Don't forget to subscribe. I do upload every single day with my meditations, plant meditations, which side to the side to the side note I'm always reminding myself I have guys I have a list of to do's that are so long and so many of them include video topics that I need to address but one of them I, I just want to quickly say at the end here is that if you're curious about the plant meditations like omg guys I don't have the the device in front of me but essentially I bought a device which I'm hoping to kind of work with in the future. We'll see what happens with that. But essentially what it does is measure the bioelectrics of the plant. So it measures like the water and sunlight rhythms within the plant, which is, in as my understanding, is basically like the equivalent of measuring our, if they do this, I don't know, measuring our circulation. And what this device does 
is measure this plant's circulation and translate those signals into sounds, into like a sound register. And so that is how I've been making these plant meditations. So when I put in these titles, guys, by the way, it's totally not clickbait. It's legitimate, like meditate with this plant. And I, especially if I'm putting the picture, which I think I've done every time, the more recent, what I've been doing more recently is literally giving you guys the picture of the actual specific plant that brought you that meditation. I just, I don't know, maybe that's just a nerdy thing that I find enjoyable, but I figure if I enjoy it, you guys might also. So just know that it's not a joke or a gimmick when I tell you that those meditations, the plant music that I'm bringing you is 100% from nature, by nature, for you to help you heal. And it's not a joke. If you meditate listening to that, I just, I, I urge you to try it because when I, well, comical brief story here is that when I first listened, I cried because I plugged into one of my plants that I have here in my house and it's, it's just an experience. It's a touching experience. You like have this very irrefutable evidence in your hands in front of you that plants are alive and like very much sensitive. And it's just kind of incredible because you realize we're, we're not only a part of, but walking around on this beautiful, very alive, very musical planet. So with that, I hope you're having a very beautiful week. You have had a good week. Again, if this was of any help to you, please do share this. Don't forget to subscribe. As I said before, I often forget to say that. So I sometimes say it more than once in a video. <laughs> so please do subscribe. I seem to have lost people, but that's okay. People come and people go and I'm not for everyone. So listen, I appreciate you so much if you're here, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope that you guys are enjoying these plant meditations as much as me. In the future, I'm going to try and figure out how I can... <laughs> I'm not that tech savvy, and so I have to sort of figure out how to go from... If there's a way for me to record me recording with the device to show you that I'm not making it up, <laughs> essentially. Because I feel like some people out there might say, well, sure, you can say that's plant music, but where's the proof that that's actually coming from the plant? And I would so love to show that off anyway. It's just very cool to me. And if you know much about me, you guys know that I'm like super sensitive to my plants. So I would never in a million years do anything that would hurt the plant. And anyway, another side tangent, I've seen some scary devices out there that have like proper clamps that like dig in and I'm like, oh, I empathize. The plant is basically, I've read comments that are like what the plant is actually saying. And it's like, ah, you know, like that picture from Psycho. And I think you're not wrong in that case. Those freaking, you know. Think of jumper cables for your car. Like you do not need that level of anything to measure a plant's bioelectrics. You can be more gentle. It's okay. Anyway, also if you want, if I haven't mentioned this, if you want, if you're into books and you're interested in plants and you want to learn about more about plants and their aliveness and things, a book called The Secret Life of Plants. I don't actually have it in front of me, but if you look it up on, I'm pretty sure it's on Amazon and like everywhere. I'm going to completely blank on the authors now, but if you look it up, The Secret Life of Plants, it's got a picture of plants on the cover. It's a black and white cover with maybe green writing or white writing, but it says The Secret Life of Plants. Thomas something. God, I wish I was better with authors. At any rate, if you're interested in that sort of thing, there's some fascinating experiments and stuff that they did that's in that book that you can read about plants and their aliveness. But in the meanwhile, I hope you're enjoying as much as I am enjoying making them and listening to plants, those plant meditations, give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys think. Or if there's any specific topic you guys want me to talk about that you're curious about, I would love to engage with you guys. And other than that, I hope you have a beautiful and blessed rest of your week. Lots of love. And I will see you beautiful souls on next Talking Thursday. Bye.